Hi there everyone, welcome to Service Online with me, Babs, and my friends. I'm so excited you're here again today. This is my testimony. Let's say a word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be here in your presence again. I pray in Jesus' name that you teach us to hide everything that we learn today in our hearts so that we'll be able to live by them. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's learn a Bible verse. And the biggest trees. One, two, three. Second Corinthians five seven. For we live by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians five seven. Amen. Oh. For all of God's promises are yes and amen in Christ. 2 Corinthians 1.20 Amen. God made everything. Hebrews 11.1 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1. Amen.
It's Bible Story Time! Followers of Jesus once met in a room where they had eaten their last supper with him. The door was locked because they were scared that the Jewish leaders might find them. Suddenly, Jesus was there with them. He said, Peace be with you. Why are you scared? I am Jesus. The followers couldn't speak because they were so happy to see him. Jesus told them that he would send them out to the world to do his work, just as God had sent him. He told them to hide until he sent the Holy Spirit to them. One of the followers, Thomas, was not in the room at the time. When the others told him about Jesus, he didn't believe them. He said, I will not believe unless I have seen and touched him myself. A few days later, Jesus once again came to the room where the followers were staying. The door was locked this time too. But this time, Thomas was with them. Jesus said to Thomas, Happy and blessed are those who cannot see me, yet believe in me. After Thomas had touched Jesus and had seen his hands, where the nails had been put in for the cross, Thomas bowed down and cried, My Lord! My Lord! Jesus said, You believe because you can see me. Happy and blessed are those who cannot see me, yet believe in me. God's Story, Noah. So part of God's story is about Noah, and it begins like this. First, let's start at the beginning. God created the world to be the most perfect home, with mountains as playgrounds and oceans as swimming pools. Then God made people to be like Him and to live in it. And He wanted us to play with animals and explore jungles and be close to Him forever. It was perfect. But instead, people ran away from God. They hurt each other. They ruined the perfect home God had built for them. The Bible says this made God really, really sad. So sad, in fact, that God decided to wash away all the evil and meanness and cruelty in the world by sending a huge flood to destroy everything, to get rid of all the wrong things and the people who kept doing them. But there was one guy who followed God. That's right, Noah. God had a special rescue plan for Noah. He told Noah to build a big boat called an ark to stay in during the flood. It had to be big enough for Noah's wife and kids and at least two of every kind of animal on earth. So, pretty big. And Noah had to build it in the middle of dry land, which means his neighbors probably thought he was crazy, or at least a little weird. Kids, sometimes following God looks a little weird. We're okay with that. Anyway, looking weird didn't stop Noah. He knew he needed to be rescued. So he finished the ark and waited for God to bring the animals. And God brought them all right. Just imagine what those neighbors thought when they saw an entire zoo strolling through their yards. When Noah's family and all the animals were inside, God shut the door. Then, the Bible says God opened the bottom of the ocean and the windows of the sky. We don't know what that means exactly, but we do know it was tons of water. It rained like this for 40 days and 40 nights. And the rain wasn't the worst of it. Once the water stopped, it didn't go away. Noah and his family sat cooped up, floating in the ark for over a year, just waiting. And waiting and waiting. Did we mention they waited? Well, when the tops of the mountains finally started to show, Noah sent out a dove to see if there was dry land. There wasn't. A week later, he sent the dove again. The water was going down. A week later, Noah sent out the dove one last time. It didn't come back, which meant it had found a home. Noah and his family could leave the ark. The very first thing Noah did was build an altar to worship God and thank him for his rescue. And God made a covenant with Noah, which is like a very special promise. God promised never to destroy the earth with a flood, even though he knew humans would keep right on doing wrong things that made him sad. 
God put a rainbow in the sky to remind Noah that he would definitely keep this promise. And just like God rescued Noah, he would one day send his own perfect son, Jesus, to earth. Jesus would take the punishment of all people. Then, God could be close to everyone who wants to follow him. And that's the story of Noah. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made a perfect home. People ruined it. God was sad. He planned a flood. And a rescue. Noah built an ark. Animals came. It rained. Noah waited. Dry land appeared. Noah worshipped God. God made a promise. God sent Jesus to rescue us. And that's a part of everything God made. The Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your family, and your relatives, and go to the land that I will show you. I will bless you and make your descendants into a great nation. You will become famous and a blessing to others. I will bless anyone who blesses you, but I will put a curse on anyone who puts a curse on you. Everyone on earth will be blessed because of you. Abraham was 75 years old when the Lord told him to leave the city of Haran. He obeyed and left with his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all the possessions and slaves they had gotten while in Haran. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abraham went as far as the sacred tree of Moreh in a place called Shechem. The Canaanites were still living in the land at the time, but the Lord appeared to Abraham and promised, I will give this land to your family forever. Abraham then built an altar there for the Lord. Later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision. Abram, don't be afraid. I will protect you and reward you greatly. But Abram answered, Lord, all-powerful, you have given me everything I could ask for, except children. And when I die, Elisa of Damascus will get all I own. You have not given me any children, and this servant of mine will inherit everything. The Lord replied, No, he won't. You will have a son of your own, and everything you have will be his. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said, Look at the sky and see if you can count the stars. That's how many descendants you will have. Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord was pleased with him. All of the promises in the Bible about God's children also concerns. Yes, it's true. God made us He made it awesome. And it is John 3 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. That whosoever believes in Him, whoever believes in Jesus, will have eternal life. Isn't that great? So, what are some of the promises in the Bible that God has made about us? The brightest stars and the biggest trees. One, two, three, everybody sing, wow! The ocean blue, even me and you. One, two, three, everybody sing, wow! Awesome, he made it awesome, and it is awesome to see. I said it's awesome. Oh, I know God made me. And I know God loves me And He knows what's best for me Cause He knows every single thing And I believe His promise is true Cause everything He says He will do On a Sunday And I believe His promise is true 
Cause everything he says he will do Oh, On a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday Boys and girls, it's time to pray. Start by thanking God for His goodness. Thank God for your family and loved ones. Pray confessing your sins. Ask God to forgive you. Pray for the sick. Pray for God's healing for them. Pray for people who are in need in times like this and ask God to come to their rescue. Finally, commit every child in this world into God's hands for his protection. Dear Father, we are grateful for your goodness upon our lives. In you we put all our hope and trust. Help us to be faithful in all times. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you'd love to ask Jesus to come into your heart, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for coming to die to save me. Today I choose you as my Lord and personal Savior. I invite you to come into my heart and live with me. Amen. Light in the 
darkness, my God, that is who you are. Every time we post something new. 
Goodbye. Have a good week. Before I go, virtual hug, everybody. Arms out, stretched in. See you next time. Bye.